Just goes to show, nobody out here is safe from any disorder. <laughs> It's Jenny C and welcome to my channel and welcome to a new thing we're doing on my channel which is a podcast. Well, podcast style videos are very popular right now and I love nothing more than to just have a podcast playing in the background and I know a lot of people can relate to that so I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to do this kind of podcast thing. I'm going to be calling it Believe in You Podcast because we're going to be talking about all the ways that we can better ourselves and experiences we've been through and what it's taught us about us and what it's taught us about life and how it's made us into the person we are today and I just want to grow with you guys and I want this channel to be that community and that space for you to feel comfortable and to grow with me. I'm so excited and I just cannot wait to see where this goes and I'm really excited to hear your feedback on it. Let me know what you want to hear me talk about, what you want to talk about because I do want to have guests on the podcast. I do want to invite people to speak about different topics and so if that's something you're interested in seeing or if you yourself want to be on the podcast, make sure to comment down below. Let me know what you want to talk about or what you want to hear about. So for our first ever podcast, I wanted to talk about something that I've talked about a lot on my channel, which is eating disorders, because that is something we're definitely going to be talking about a lot of in this podcast. And I think it resonates with a lot of people, even if you haven't been through it. So to give you guys a little bit of background, if you're new to the channel or the podcast, or if you haven't heard this before, I struggled with eating disorders for about 10 years of my life. I have since recovered and I am now very passionate about helping people who are going through that to get better, recover, and get out of that because it sucks. Um, and also, uh, I'm very passionate about educating others who maybe haven't been through eating disorders but who are loved ones of people with eating disorders or anybody really because everybody is going to experience that or come into contact with that situation at some point in their lives. So I recently came across a BuzzFeed video. It's titled, Questions You're Too Afraid to Ask Somebody with an Eating Disorder. I wrote out the questions that they asked in the video and they asked fellow BuzzFeed coworkers who has struggled with an eating disorder or were going through an eating disorder um, these few questions. And I thought it would be so interesting to talk about it myself on a platform that I could talk about it more in depth and hopefully give somebody a little bit of advice or to, you know, add a little bit of spice onto it because I think that the video was great and I do recommend you go watch it. I will be crediting it down below if you want to go check it out, but I feel like we can elaborate a little bit more. Let's jump right in, right? <laughs> so we've got seven questions here, so let's get into them. Disclaimer before we begin is we are talking about eating disorders, anything associated with eating disorders. If any of those things trigger you, please feel free to click on any of my other videos. I have plenty of non-triggering videos to check out. So the first question they asked was, is it because you think you're unattractive? So I'm guessing they're saying like, do you have an eating disorder because you think you're unattractive? Yes and no. I think it's very common for people to think that eating disorders are a result of not feeling attractive or you know, you feel like you need to do this in order to comply with the beauty ideals of society, which is true to some extent, I'm not gonna lie. That can be a reason why a lot of people start habits that escalate into an eating disorder. But at the same time, eating disorders are not only about that. A lot of eating disorders have nothing to do with how you look. It really boils down to who you're asking. When I struggled with orthorexia, which is one of the lesser known eating disorders, I would say, orthorexia is like an obsession with healthy eating or foods you deem healthy and you like avoid other foods that you deem are not healthy or suitable for you, basically. So when I was struggling with orthorexia, it literally had nothing at all to do with how I looked. At, I was 11. I had no sense of what I looked like. You know, it's like that point right before you even have self-image, like you don't even, you don't even realize that you're like a person. I don't know how to explain that. Like you don't realize that like you can change how you look. Like it's before all of that. It was all really about control and perfectionism. I just wanted to, feel like I was doing the best I could. I wanted to be the best that I could be. So I literally was a robot <laughs> and, and that boiled over into how I ate as well. And so I was very strict about the things that I would eat, wouldn't eat. And yeah, and it had nothing to do with what I looked like. So there you go. But on the other note, there were other eating disorders I experienced that were directly related to trying to 
make my body conform into a certain way. Those pressures that I put on myself and that society puts on all of us, um, coupled together with a lot of emotions and whatever going on, um, escalate into an eating disorder and uh, yeah, it could be either or, you know, and it could be both. And a lot of the times I think even if it does come as a result of like, oh, I want to look the way society says that we should look, I, I want to look like that perfect, you know, body or that perfect look. I think even if that's your sentiment, I think there's so much more behind that that people don't really acknowledge. Like the reason we want to look this way is not necessarily because that's attractive, but it's because that look gets the most attention, the most likes, the most uh, approval um, and most acceptance. And I think those are feelings that we want to have and we associate those feelings with looking a certain way. So even if it is about appearance, I think it often it's kind of, you know, as a result of other things behind that even. I could talk about that for days, but let's go on to number two. So the second question they asked was, why is it so hard for you to eat? Um, I think when people think eating disorder, they think that somebody who like doesn't eat or it's somebody who like throws up after they eat, which those are different eating disorders, you know, those are different things and they are eating disorders, but those are not the only things that exist in the eating disorder realm. <laughs> there are other eating disorders that binge eat or, you know, there's a lot of situations. But if we're talking specifically about anorexia and why is it so hard to eat, I can tell you from my experience with anorexia is oftentimes because you associate eating with a feeling. Um, maybe you associate eating with shame or guilt or fear. You're afraid of gaining weight or you're afraid of how this food is going to affect you mentally, physically. In a lot of ways, eating disorders can be an addiction, I think. The more you do it, the more you want to do it. And so the less you eat, the better you feel because it's feeding that part of you that's telling you don't eat, uh, lose weight, do this, do that, measure yourself, like get smaller, whatever, you know, get more fit, whatever it is. Um, it's different for everybody, of course. But um, specifically for me, why was it so hard to eat? Because I had worked so hard to not eat for so long that eating felt like I was undoing all my hard work or something like that, which is like such a such a sad way to think about life and you know and to live but I mean that that's the truth and and then that was during anorexia but when I was struggling with bulimia I associated eating with a lot of shame a lot of guilt eating felt so painful because it was just like associated with all those feelings of like disgust and that was a lot to overcome but here we are today praise the lord okay so I think that hopefully that answers the question number three how can you have an eating disorder if you're not underweight? It's a very honest question, so we're gonna answer it like this. People associate eating disorders with somebody who looks unhealthily thin, and that's just not the case. Eating disorders come in all shapes, all sizes, all ethnicities, all genders, all races, everything, all of the above. You cannot, an eating disorder does not have one look. Stereotypically, when you think eating disorder, you probably think like an underweight, white, straight, female, but that's, Absolutely not the case and eating disorders come in everybody, every variety. Eating disorders are a mental illness, so it literally has nothing to do with what you look like. I was the most sick mentally when I looked the most normal physically, if that makes any sense. So literally your looks have nothing to do with it. Moving on. Number four, what they asked was, how can men have an eating disorder? And again, just piggybacking off of what we just talked about, eating disorders do not uh, discriminate, <laughs> if that's the word, I guess. The same thing that women experience, men experience too. And I think a lot of the times we want to argue that women experience it more severely, which may be true in some instances. I'm not going to deny that, <laughs> especially as a woman. But I think oftentimes men experience the same exact pressures, just in different ways, you know, in different areas of their lives. So statistically, women do get eating disorders more than men. We have to consider the fact that maybe they're not being diagnosed with eating disorders as much as women are. Number five, if you're eating, does that mean you're recovered? 
Good question. Absolutely not. <laughs> right back to that uh, one of those first few questions. Just like the way that you can look any type of way when you have an eating disorder, you can eat any type of way and have an eating disorder. Like, you just don't know. You really don't know what somebody's going through. Just because you see somebody doing something doesn't mean that that's what they do all the time. Doesn't mean that that's the way they are all the time. So, um, for me, I got away with eating in front of people all the time and behind the scenes I was not eating enough or I was eating or I was binging and in front of people I looked normal. I looked like I eat just like everybody else eating. I have the same things on my plate, the same amount, but behind the scenes when I'm alone or you know when I'm living my daily life, that's not what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, eating disorders are not as obvious as people think they are. A lot of people who have been through it for many years are experienced with hiding it very well, which is not good, but anyway. Number six, what is recovery like? Okay, let's get into it. It sucks! I think the best way to think about it is like, let's say, oh, here we go. Athletes, you see them winning gold medals and you're like, wow, look at them doing amazing things. But what you didn't see is the years and years and years that they spent swimming laps and running around and just feeling dead because they're exercising so much and they're trying so hard and you don't see the failures and you don't see the times that they fall down and the times that they feel like giving up. You don't see those things. All you see is they won the medal. So I think that goes the same for eating disorder recovery. I think it's very, very important to tell people how hard recovery is because if you don't know that and you go into it and you experience the worst thing you've ever experienced, you're gonna have a hard time keep going, keep swimming. You're gonna have a hard time just keep swimming. Swimming? You're gonna have a hard time keeping the swim going, whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> With an eating disorder, it's horrible, right? Life is horrible, it sucks. With recovery, it's even worse. To me it was. I'm not saying to everybody, everybody has their own experience. If you've had an experience different than mine or if you have an experience you wanna share, please share it, I'd love to know. But for me, it was way, 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 way worse than actually having an eating disorder. But that horrible, horrible struggle led me to a place where I am free now and I don't have, and my life is like a million times better than it was with an eating disorder. So it's definitely worth it, but it's definitely the hardest thing I've had to do. Because here's the thing, eating disorders are a way to cope with life. Oftentimes you go to an eating disorder to feel safe, to feel in control to feel these good feelings. But in reality, they're just false senses of security because you think you're feeling safe, but in reality, you're stuck in a box. You're stuck in a cage. You're stuck chained down to this eating disorder. Um, I love describing an eating disorder as a prison cell, as chains, because that's really what it feels like. You feel like you're safe, but in reality, you're in prison, you're in a cell. And I'm not trying to undermine actual jail because I've never been to jail, but I feel like I have a sense of what mental jail feels like. So um, that's how I describe it. So when something bad happens in life, you go to those eating disorder behaviors, those habits, those patterns, because it feels safe, it feels comfortable, it feels familiar, even if it sucks. It feels some sense of good because you know it and you are, you, you can expect, like there's no unknowns with it, especially if you've had an eating disorder for a while, you kind of know how it's gonna be. So that sense of no, like knowing what's happening, that sense of control, that sense of safety, even though it's all fake, <laughs> it feels kind of good, even if in reality everything else is like falling apart. So it, there's some sense of good feeling in it, which is why of course people are stuck in it because there is some part of it that feels good even if it's fake when something goes wrong in life, you feel like you can run to this eating disorder to, you know, kind of cope. But when you go through eating disorder recovery, you're still, life is still going to happen. You're going to possibly lose your job. You're going to possibly fail a test. You're going to possibly uh, break up with your boyfriend or, you know, uh, get a divorce. I mean, you name it. There's no age limit, by the way, for eating disorders. Anybody can have an eating disorder. So, Life is going to happen, hard things are going to come your way, and when you're in eating disorder recovery, you have to learn to feel the emotions of those hard experiences in life, 
feel all your feelings, everything that you're going through now, and even everything that you suppressed before and, and tried to run away from before, all of those feelings are going to attack you at one time. And it's very overwhelming and it's very, very difficult. Highly recommend <laughs> that you have a support team behind you. A therapist, a dietitian, a primary care doctor, all of people, all of these people who specialize in eating disorder recovery. So it sucks. It's possible if you really, really commit to it. Eventually, if you don't give up, you will make it to that other side. And last question, question number seven. What would you like people to know about your eating disorder? I'm gonna break this question down. I'm gonna give you an answer. What I want somebody who has an eating disorder to know about eating disorders. And I'm also gonna to talk to people who haven't had an eating disorder and what would I tell them? So first I'm gonna address people who haven't had an eating disorder. I would say eating disorders, they're so much worse. I like millions of times worse than you probably think they are. It's easy for anybody who hasn't been through some uh, something to downplay it. Literally pick and choose whatever struggle you want to think about. You haven't been through it. You're not going to understand how challenging it is. You might have an idea, but even still, you'll never really know what it's like. So I think it's so important for people who haven't been through it to be very compassionate and empathetic towards people who are going through it. And to people who struggle, who are struggling with an eating disorder, who's been through an eating disorder, I just wanna say a lot of things. But again, I'm gonna pick one thing for today. <laughs> choosing recovery and choosing to pursue that freedom is probably one of the best decisions you'll ever make. And if you have been through an eating disorder or if you are going through recovery or whatever stage you're in, I just wanna say that I'm proud of you for fighting through it and being a warrior, being a survivor for just doing your best. It's very difficult to recover. It's very difficult to fight these feelings, these thoughts and these things that go on. And I'm just proud of you for, you know, for waking up another day, for giving it another shot and for doing what you can do. And most of all, I want to let you know that I believe in you. So <laughs> bringing it back, cheesily, bringing it back to the title of this podcast, Believe in You, I just want to let you know that I believe in you. Whatever you're going through in life, whatever situation you're experiencing, I believe in you. You can overcome this. You can do it. So thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I do want to start giving shout outs to uh, subscribers, um, to followers. So if you guys interact a lot with my videos and my posts, then I want to shout you out at this section of the podcast. So make sure you are interacting and being engaged because you might just get a shout out. Also, make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you like this video. Comment down below if you have anything you'd like to share. Again, I want this to be a community where we can encourage and uplift each other and learn from each other's experiences. So let's do that. <laughs> make sure to tune in, not next Saturday, but the Saturday after that. That, and I will see you guys then. Bye!